Hi guys, welcome to today's special maths video on, uh, well, the differentiation of x equals function of y. Now, I didn't say that incorrectly. No, I know normally we do y equals function of x, but it's not always practical or helpful to do it that way. What if we could flip things on their head? Huh? Well, that's the beauty of specialist math, showing that there are always different ways of doing things. And you might be saying, well, why on earth would we want to do this? Well, if we go to something like y is equal to sine, to the minus one of x. We know that that is a funky graph. We've met it in previous videos. But how would we differentiate it? At this moment in time, we don't know how to differentiate an inverse sine function. But what if we could rethink the question? What about if we actually had sine of y equals x? Well, we know that sine can differentiate to cos. We've known that. But that would suggest then that in this situation, we'd be doing dx by dy. Well, actually, you can differentiate with respect to anything. Whether it's useful or not is remains to be seen in later videos. So dx by dy doesn't really mean anything to us. We know that the gradient of a line or a tangent is actually dy by dx. So how do we, how do we take dx by dy and turn it into something more useful? Well, in a previous video, we've already looked at product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. So those should now be in your arsenal to use for the rest of these videos. So we know from the chain rule that dy by dx is equal to dy by du multiplied by du by dx. What happens if we change, for example, and look at one specific case? Let's look at the idea where y is equal to x. And we've done that before, yes, when we swap these things over. Okay, so now I'm going to replace every y with an x. Marvellous. So that's going to become dx on dx is equal to dx on du times du by dx. Now you're gonna turn around and say, well, hold on a moment, dx by dx is equal to one. And if we multiplied those things together, we would also get one. Well, that's good. At least mathematically they equate, and that is good. But how does that help us? Well, go back to the idea of uh, gradients of perpendicular lines. What do you remember? You knew that m1 times m2 is equal to minus one, or that m1 was minus one on m2. So in this situation, what do we notice? Well, we would notice that uh, using that, that dx by du would be one on du by dx. Oh, ka -ching. That means that they are effectively the reciprocal of each other. So that means if we go back to the example we were dealing with a moment ago, then if I can find out dx by du, all I need to do is reciprocate both sides and I would get dy by dx. Now you're going to turn around and say, well, where is this going to be useful? And I will show you some examples in a moment. But basically, this is only true, as I say here, so long as that dy by dx, or sorry, dx by dy does not equal zero. Okay, so that's important. And you'd have to make sure, yes, that dy by dx or dx by dy is not equal to zero, or it's not going to work. So here's an example of where this might be used. x equals y cubed find dy by dx. Now in that situation, we've got x is equal to y cubed. Yes, we could say uh, y is equal to the cube root of x. So y is equal to x to the power of a third. So y dashed is equal to one third x to the minus two thirds. So y dashed is equal to one on three. Uh, what would that be? The cube root of x squared. Uh, cube root of x squared. I don't know about you, that looks disgusting, yes? Not interested in that in any shape or form, yes? Okay, it's practically right, but let's look at the next one. Let's now say, well, let's look at dx by dy. dx by dy gives me 3y squared, and now we know that dy by dx is just the reciprocal of those, so dy by dx is equal to 1 on 3y squared. Now, how is that going to make life any different for me? Well, previously, we've always been given an x coordinate. Yeah, remember, we'd be like, I'll oh, find the gradient when x equals. Why has no one ever asked me, excuse me, why can't we do it when we know what the y value is? Well, ladies and gentlemen, now you can. In that situation, if we got the y coordinate, we can find the gradient of that graph. <laughs> And you might be saying, well, why is this important? Well, there are certain times where you can find gradients at different points. Important here. This is a one-to-one -one function. We know what that would actually look like. Yes, if you don't, actually draw it on your graph. Yeah, because all we would know there is if that was y equals x cubed, it would look something like 
This, it doesn't, yes, because we're going to reflect it in the uh, line y equals x. So what would that look like? It would look something like that, okay? So that is one to one. And for each point along that graph, there's only be one gradient. But what happens in this situation here? Well, basically we've got the equation x is equal to y squared minus 4y. Now again, when you start sketching these things, and I've done this for you on Desmos already, what do we notice? Well, it's a parabola, but it's just a parabola now this way. Oh my God, yes, notice, but again, it's no different from having y is equal to x squared minus 4x. The only difference there is that would look something like that. Right, so we've got to reframe what we're thinking here. So in this situation here, find the gradient of the curve at the point where y equals three. Now, if we look at where y equals three is, it's roughly drawing a line through here, it only intercepts that graph in one place. So there's only going to be one value of gradient. So that's okay, we can continue this. And so we will now say, right, so we've got dx by dy is equal to two y, minus four. Reciprocate and what do we get? We get dy by dx is equal to one on two y minus four. Ka-ching! Thanking you very much. So we know the y value now is three, absolutely. So we now know that dy by dx is going to be one on two times three minus four, which is six minus four, which gives me the great value of a half. Now, when we do these particular functions, it's really important to look at any values that might not cause or, or might not be allowed. And what we notice is here with this one there, we've got two y minus four. So the bottom of that graph or that function could not be equal to zero. And so y could not be equal to two. So that is defined for all values except y equals two. Understand what we're doing so far? Again, nice and easy in that situation. What about this one here? Find the gradient of the graph when x equals five. Uh-oh, bit of a problem now, x equals five. Now, we'll notice there they're trying to trick us. They've given us an x value, which means we're actually gonna end up with two y values. So I'm gonna need to find the value of the gradient there and the gradient there. Okay, we can do that. All right, so we've already started with x is equal to y squared minus four y, same one we did before, dx by dy is equal to two y minus four, or dy by dx is equal to one on two y minus four. Okie dokie, we can use that. So now what I need to do is find my y values. I can't substitute x values in here, I need to find my y values. So when x equals five, what do we get? So when x is equal to five, I get um, five is equal to y squared minus four y, so five is equal to, or y squared, try that one, y squared minus four y plus five equals zero. And fast forwarding this, I'm gonna get the values of y as five or negative one. So those are my two y values I'm now going to test. Whoop, put those in there. So therefore, when y is equal to five, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get dy by dx is equal to one on two fives of 10 minus four is six. And when y is equal to negative one, my dy by dx gives me negative one, it's negative two, negative four, one on negative six, ka -ching. So again, drawing a sketch of these things could be quite beneficial to know how many differentials you are looking for, how many uh, gradients you are looking for. Now, what we can see here is the CAS can also solve this for you. And being a CAS, it seems to want you to be able to do it the other way. So I can't find it at this moment in time, but I'm going to look and maybe update a later video with the idea that we seemingly have to be tied in to the fact that here you've got to find dy by dx. Your calculator doesn't seem to be able to differentiate dx by dy. So in this situation, going back to the question we had before, you'll notice that what we're now doing is solving that equation for y. So we're rearranging it for y, and we notice we've got our two values here. And then we're differentiating each individual section of that graph. Yes, why? Because we're expecting two different values. So there we go. So that's one section of my graph. And here is another section of my graph. And then I'm just saying, well, okay, what happens now when I substitute the value of x equals five into each of those equations? And when I put x equals five into that equation, I get minus one sixth. And when I put x equals five into that equation, I get one sixth. 
ka-ching, calculator can do it. And how about you? I actually quite like the simplicity of that one there. And that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it has been useful to you. It's going to lead into a lot, lot more coming up. Um, that's uh, me done. That's uh, Darren Masguru. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I look forward to seeing you in another. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care and bye-bye.